military member of reddit what is the most embarrassing this guy won't make it through basic story you have live grenade training easy as pie it's throwing a grenade except for m now at this stage of training m had made a bad name for himself and no one wanted to be near him on any live fire training for various reasons so we are sitting in a bunker type building all waiting our turn when M's name is called. We all sit there knowing it's going to be disaster. When we hear for fuck's sake throw it, or thump then someone being beaten. It turned when M pulled the pin he had held the grenade wrong way round and the fly off level shot up instantly. He then froze requiring the instructor to grab the grenade off him throw it then pull him down on the ground behind cover. The instructor was mega pissed off at this stage and beat the daylights out of him. Two days later he was transferred out of the infantry and joined the RLC to stack blankets. This guy not only made it through basics, he somehow got himself deployed to Afghanistan too. I have no idea how he did it, he was the laziest fucker I have met in my life. When we first arrived at camp, we were put in rooms of 4 people, and the whole first month he slept in his sleeping bag, because he didn't want to bother with having to change his sheets, or he didn't know how to. Now Afghanistan during summer is fucking hot, and this guy never showered, so you can imagine the smell of that sleeping bag. Our squad leader literally had to sit down with him, and explain the importance of hygiene, when you live, so close with other people, diseases spread like wildfire, when they first arrive. That didn't change much though. He'd just sit in his sleeping bag in all his free time eating candy and jerking off. We heard him jerking off during nighttime after lights were out, and I swear he never left the room afterwards to clean himself up. I've no idea where his jizz ended up. Probably inside his sleeping bag. He'd also put his used chewing tobacco under his pillow when he finished. One day me and the other two guys were so fed up with his stank, one of us dragged him to the showers, while the two of us left, put on some gloves, and took the sleeping bag outside to light it on fire. When we were out on our posts around the camp working, he disappeared to go to the bathroom and would be gone for close to an hour every time. He was probably jerking off in there too. If mortar started hitting close to camp he completely freaked out and had no idea what to do. What a fucking jackass. The officer who decided he was good enough to go overseas is also a fucking jackass. Guy in my flight, let's call him Snuffles. Snuffles is one of the most unique people I have ever met. He had the look like he just flopped gasping out of the shallow end of the gene pool after his incestuous parents just peed in it. Seriously this poor guy had the ultimate genetic short stick. He was 18, 5 foot 4, almost emaciated thin, and looked like he was 50. Badly balding, wussipy grey hair, wrinkled skin, ear hair, nose hair, back hair, dude was gross hairy. Add on uncomfortably thick glasses that made him look like a slightly wizened six flags dude, and you get start to get the picture. Anyway, Snuffles could not do a single thing right. He couldn't make his bed, he couldn't do part without half dying, and he had trouble following simple instruction. The day we went to the shooting range was interesting. We were given 50 rounds, and tasked with shooting a paper target 25 ids away with open sights from various positions. We all were amazed at Snuffles as we watched him explode the sandbags that are holding the uprights in place that hold the targets. Two targets over. He was shooting about 10 feet off his mark. It was amazing. We had all agreed before Ange Day that whoever was around Snuffles shooting spot that they need to put a few round on his paper for him. As a flight we loved Snuffles. He became kind of our mascot and everyone worked together to help him through the work. RT even started using WTF are you doing? Smoking Snuffles hair? As an insult. He brought our flight together as a team because he never gave up. He always tried and tried and kept trying. Sadly around week 5 he went to the hospital and was diagnosed with a heart murmur and was given a medical discharge. We were all sad but kind of expected it. The stupid thing was the reason he went to the hospital. Poor kid ate his dinner too fast, and choked on some rice, inhaled a single grain, and had to go see the docs, to help him cough it up. That's when they noticed the murmur. I served in a conscript army. Most everyone served, but generally unfit people did not go to combat units. We had one kid who transferred from a job into our unit for basic training. He said he wanted to be a fighter, and that his super secret unit that he worked for in human logistics wanted to send him to our basic training, and then bring him back. 
so he could serve in their super secret special forces unit. Kid was 6 feet 6 inches and at least 360 pounds. An absolutely huge guy. He couldn't run. Couldn't work out. Couldn't carry anything substantial. Couldn't contribute to the team. We can call him Snorlax. One night after a long ruck march we were forced to stay up all night and prepare for a company inspection. This was pretty normal, we would stay up and clean all of our gear, get everything in order, etc and go through various levels of inspection. By the time the inspection came around we had been up for about 36 hours or so. We had marched and worked out in that time and everyone was hurting pretty bad. We were only 2 or so months into training at this point and still weren't used to the total mintfuck that the army can be. The hardest part about this whole inspection is having to stand still information during the entire freaking thing. We were all beat, barely standing up, keeping just the minimum level of acceptable when this motherfucker starts crying. He fucking starts crying in the middle of formation. He starts complaining that his legs hurt, that he can't stand up. No shit your legs hurt. My fucking legs hurt too. Everyone's fucking legs hurt. Everyone wants to be done with this shit. The company commander, a captain, stops the inspection. Fucking wonderful. This is already painfully slow and now we are at a fucking standstill. The fucking crying, blubbering, ginormous baby then has the fucking nerve to sit the fuck down in formation. The captain looks at me, excess effects cues, pick up Snorlax, and help him stand for the rest of inspection. Motherfucker. I can barely pick myself up at this point. My entire platoon gives me the biggest look of pity I have ever seen. It takes three of us to lift Snorlax off the fucking ground and lean him on me. He was total dead weight. My knees were shaking. Barely able to hold up this fucking mammoth of a man. Inspection continues. The captain walks over to me and starts inspecting my gear. My gear is normally perfect. I took pride in making it that way. The entire company used my gear as an example of how to do this. During my fiasco holding up Snorlax I had accidentally kicked one thing out of place. The captain saw it. He opened his mouth, like he was about to chew me out, but he stopped. He looked me in the eyes, and saw my disdain for him. Pure hatred. I was almost begging him to yell at me. I don't know what I would have done, but my anger chakra was raging. He looked down at my gear, back into my eyes down at my gear again. Perfect job excess effects cues. Thank you, sir I replied. The inspection went on. Snorlax never stopped crying. When it was all over, I dumped Snorlax on the floor, put my gear away, and went the fuck to sleep. Snorlax dropped out about a month later. We had a guy that literally had no clue that you were supposed to wipe your but after you poop. Seriously, he had never been taught how to use toilet paper, and had no idea that he stank. As far as I know he is still in the military, 6 years ago. We had a guy who was clearly autistic, but never actually diagnosed. As a side note, he told us his mother was taking and spending his paycheck, and giving him $50 per month allowance. He saw nothing wrong with that. He struggled with most of the basic physical tasks we had to do, even the most basic part warm up exercises. Our drills did not take it easy on him, even though they had to know something was up with this guy. It seems harsh, but we were going through infantry osset, and if this guy somehow made it through, odds are he was going to get someone hurt or killed. Not trying to blame or belittle him, just being realistic. Anyway, they were hard on him. Because they obviously wanted him to quit, yes, you can essentially quit by refusing to train, after which they kick you out. So one of our drills notices he can't even do the half jack. In front of the rest of the platoon, he changes into his part uniform, and makes this kid do half jacks along with him for about a half hour straight. The kid never caught on, and kept messing it up every 3 seconds. He was berated the entire time. It was more sad than embarrassing, because absolutely everyone knew what was going on. To his credit, he stuck it out, and had a great attitude, until they finally sent him to get diagnosed and ultimately discharged. There was one guy who wanted out, after about 2 days. About one halfway through we were going to start live firing our weapons, zeroing them, and he said he was going to shoot himself in the foot. Was gone the next day, so I guess he got what he wanted. I had just arrived at Great Lakes for boot camp, this was in 1991. 
and we are standing in line for our first introduction to what is known in the military as Operation Golden Flow or our first urinalysis test. As I'm standing in a very long line and tip tapping around, because I have to piss so much, a guy standing behind me taps me on the shoulder and asks what we are waiting for. I look at him and tell him a urinalysis. He looks at me and asks me what a urinalysis is, so I tell him to see who has taken any drugs recently. He nods, shrugs and says well, I guess I shouldn't have smoked that crack last night. He was serious. That's when I knew he wouldn't make it through boot camp. Now, he officially wasn't fired that first day, but about two weeks later, when his results came back he was. So yes, you can say that he was fired that first day, but had to suffer for a few weeks until officially let go. This guy and his girlfriend joined at the same time, Tojitha for Eva. Placed in separate companies. Couple weeks into basic, he comes up to formation all excited. Imabia daddy. When I was in the army cadet corps, about 16 years old. Some kid I bunked with got a care package from his parents. Naturally, everything in it got confiscated, but somehow he managed to keep this rubber chicken that came with it. In the middle of the night he cut it open on the sharp edge of the bedpost and started fucking it. It was one of those that was filled with little white beads and they were everywhere. German military 20 years ago had a draft. I was drafted. I wear thick glasses, minus 9 dioptrine. German military didn't want me despite me coming with bulletproof eyes. They've explained to me that I wouldn't be able to see much if my glasses get knocked off during duty. I told them that while I wouldn't be able to make out the flag signs I would be able to see the soldiers wearing them. So I'd shoot everybody, resulting in me being the last survivor, which in turn would result in my side having won the engagement. They didn't find it as funny as I did, 